David. We had like a Skype audition from my dad's office in Kentucky. So you had read this and you had a reaction to it that made you want to do it. Um, I can't. I think that I think that just David O. Russell came first. I was. I. I, I think I wanted. I wanted the movie as soon as I heard it was David O. Russell. He's. He's my favorite. I think he's the greatest director, and um, I've always wanted to work with him. So. I said yes, I want it, and then I read the script. So I can't. I can't remember if when I auditioned, I had actually read the script or not. Which is not great. So auditioning in the sense of just having a conversation. No, we we actually went over. We did scenes. That's on it's, Skype. That's terrifying. Yeah, running scenes. We're like doing this. <laughs> I was like so embarrassing. I was happy it wasn't on tape, or I'd be like terrified of where that is. So is working with David um, nervous making? Is he someone who's a little scary? A little no. Yeah. No, he's he's intimidating when you don't know him because I see his films and I'm just like, what is this person's brain? It's just like, um, and then you meet him and he's just like, he's so nice and warm and funny and and just he's he's one of my favorite people in the entire world. I love him so much. He's just like, he's just a sweetheart and just so open and honest and. Um, and such a joy to make movies with because he's so no bullshit, like honest. Like I'll be in the middle of the scene and he'll go, "Oh my god, it's so bad." <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, Thanks. let's do it again." <laughs> like, it's like you know, he's, he doesn't ever tiptoe around around actors' like feelings. Like he doesn't have time for it. He's just like, "Just do this." But it's coming from such an honest, wonderful place in in his life, and or and you know, it's that that you need. And I, and I want people to be honest with me. I don't want. There's no point in, like, telling me I'm doing great when I'm not. Like, it's just like any other job. Sometimes you're going to be good, and sometimes you're going to be bad. And he's, he's, he's wonderful. I love working with him. I hope that I can do every single movie with him. Well, last night at the, um, at the screening, which went very well, in case you didn't yeah. notice, um, uh, you, appall- you asked everyone to sort of, don't, don't judge my dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you, are, are you... Uh, you and Bradley rehearsed for a few yeah, weeks. Yeah, we, re- we rehearsed for a, a, a while. Um, I had extra because I'm terrible. So I had extra homework. Um, yeah, it, it was actually like the best thing you could do for two actors, though, because we, we, you know, we get so comfortable with each other, spending hours learning something, starting at the same level and sweating and grabbing each other's sweaty armpits. And like, you can't, by the time we got on set, we were like brother and sister. But you also um, were were romantic. Uh, this is a real love story. Yeah, and I probably found... shouldn't have said brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was I was really rooting for for the two of you. And and how did you uh, sort of approach? You know, he has a clinical diagnosis that's a little more, um, you know, in a way you can you can read it in the books. What what was your diagnosis? Um, I didn't really. I just feel like she's just kind of her own little ball of problems she's just kind of like this force of nature of like I didn't really ever think of her as I think she's just a black sheep and um she just doesn't really make any excuses for herself she just kind of says what she wants to say and does what she wants to do and um I I, I didn't really feel like there was like a diagnosed problem for that I just she's acting she's, out yeah in various she's, ways. she's unhappy yeah. Until well, yeah, she was just kind of hasn't really been accepted by anybody, and it's kind of it's it's, it's a little bit it's it's nicer when when people don't accept you and you don't accept yourself, and then you can just be straight up unhappy. And I think she was kind of having this struggle because she was fine with herself, but other people weren't, which is I think more depressing. One quality that you have that I picked up on from our very first interview. Oh, God. The one, I hope you didn't pick up anything from that strong. interview. No, it was fine. <laughs> it got a lot of hits. I, I hope not. God, I'm in but, such a um, bad mood. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you were fine. I was giving you a hard time. I, and I don't even remember it. I just remember my mom calling and telling me to watch it. She was like, you were in such a bad mood. I was like, I just got off a plane. I was like, ugh. That's funny. She's yeah. giving you grief. I know. Oh um, God. She's... But uh, so so. I'm glad you were willing to submit yourself again. But um, but you have a certain, uh, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but you have a certain confidence. There's something about you that you know you can do these these very difficult, challenging 
things. Can you talk about what that is? Well, that's what happens when you are only good at one thing. <laughs> you really grab onto that one thing. Um, film, movies, acting, like it's, it's really the only thing I'm, I know and I understand and I'm good at. I, I, um, I, I think that that was why I wanted to do it so badly when I was like, when I was 14, I had been like, I wasn't really that good of a student. I, I was, I always had to do sports, but I never really liked them. And my brothers were great at sports. And my brothers were getting straight A's and I was just kind of like, I never found my thing. And then, I mean, I was only 14 and I have to find my thing. And then I wrote a script and I was just like, I get this. I understand this. And after spending like years in a classroom, just feeling like an idiot. Um, so I, I, I think that it's just something that I understand and, and I get, but and I'm so lucky that, that, one, that I only have one gift, but thank God it's, <laughs> it's useful. <laughs> I spoke to Jodie Foster about you um, when, when you did The Beaver, which you did really well. That oh, was, thank you. Because, of course, everybody looked at Winter's Bone and they said, ah, the director got that great performance. You know, they knew you were good, but yeah. you, could you do it again? Could you repeat that? Could you be as good again? And you have shown that. Oh, thank you. Well, I've also worked with amazing directors up until then, so... But Jody said you had something inside of you, a kind of mystery inside of you, the, the, a depth that, that comes comes out. And, and it's, 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 it's a... It, it, did you have a, a, any kind of childhood or anything that was tough that, that you lean on, that you address when you, when you have to come up with pain and anger and all these emotions, especially in something like Hunger Games? I don't. I... No, I've never, I've gone my entire life, thank God, without a tragedy. I, my parents are still together in a happy marriage. My family is safe, happy, healthy. I've had a wonderful childhood, a normal childhood. Um, I've, I've, had, I've had such a wonderful life. I, I, think, I hope it keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when when you were um, cast in, uh, so working with Jodie Foster on The Beaver, what was that like? It was amazing. I mean, she's she's brilliant, unbelievably genius, but she's also she's so normal. She's so normal. It's like she does. She has no idea she's famous. Like she's so incredibly normal. And and I've never really met a famous person like that because like I've I've never met. I have worked with the most incredible people in the entire world, but famous people are, and I'm included in it, like, different because people talk to you differently. So how are you not supposed to change? Like, I don't blame them. Like, I had always, every, every famous person I had ever met was, like, nice, but, you know, you can tell. They're, like, different. I know that's probably not a good thing to say, but, and then you meet her, and she's just, like, she's so, she's so normal. And I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make that seem like I was talking bad about other actors. It's just, it's just kind of, like, you know, like uh, neurosurgeons are odd because they're so smart. <laughs> it's just kind of like actors have like a certain thing because it. it how can it not change? You being st feeling like you're being stared at all the time and people talking to you differently. Like I, I, I understand it, but Jody just was so unaffected by it, and she was like the only person that when I looked at her, I remember like it gave me hope because I was like I can, I can do this and still be not just nice but normal. You were very good. You were very good. And Thank and, you. and then there was X Men. It, it, so was that a tough one for you? Was it was it a because that's more about action and more about green screen and makeup and all this. Yeah. And it must have been sort of. I remember that year. That was the year that I auditioned for like every single giant, like blockbuster action movie I could get my hands on. I, I think that I was. So curious, but I had only done indies, and um, I think that I just wanted to like, ah, like, like see more like stuff, like work on it, like have a big budget, and, like see green screens and CGI, and like work in a different movie. And I also I really liked X Men movies, um, and I read the script. I thought the script was cool, and I thought that would be so cool, to, like be mystique, like be a superhero. Like it was, it was really, it was really exciting. And I'm still excited by it. <laughs> I still <laughs> think it's cool. 